Thrive Guys, episode 16, The Productivity Hacksperiment. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Joe. Sorry, you've caught me a bit off guard with the uh, curtains comment just before. <laughs> we're oh, yeah, just before we hit record, up. I said uh, we needed to, to get started because I have curtains to return. Yeah, that wasn't part of the part of the show, but, you know, we all, no, have, sorry, I just we all have normal lives. I bought some curtains last week after the show uh, for our living room, and uh, I couldn't have got it more wrong. I bought them. They were too wide, so they were massive, like, width-wise, and uh, they didn't go down to the end of the end of the, the window have you tried so, them both I, ways literally yeah i literally couldn't have got it more wrong uh so you know there we go how, how has uh how's your week been dan it's been very busy um work wise and personal wise audio wise but it's been nice busy Good. it's been wonderful weather so i've been able to go out on you know actually decent lunchtime walks mm. uh, you know we've got the meadows near our house so i've been able to go out and actually get a bit of sunshine so decent. i'm probably gonna end up catching the sun if i'm not careful decent uh, we've also gone back to climbing. It's worth noting. Yeah, we have. And that was fantastic. But my arms are still hurting now. My whole upper body is in... It's str- it's a struggle. Like, like yesterday wasn't so bad because we, we're recording on Saturday morning. Uh, we went climbing on Thursday. Yep. And Friday was fine. I felt a little bit sore, but it was manageable. But this morning, I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just lifting my arms is a painful experience. But I was uh, not prepared for it. At all. No, neither was I. I don't. I didn't remember the pain. I remembered the fun and the <laughs> problem solving and all of the fun things that uh, come with climbing, but not the pain of the muscles afterwards. But it was interesting to see wh- how far we had declined in our physical yeah, strength we'd and confidence massively. levels. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's surprising what six months will do to your. Uh, to your muscles i've basically completely atrophied uh, in the last six months but you know you've got to start somewhere haven't you well that's what i was saying about when i first done when i done that first climb it was literally about the confidence you kind of forget how yeah. how daunting it is to climb up on a wall with no ropes and just kind of exist <laughs> yeah, you hold exactly. on for dear life that's what that's what hurts the most like my grip yeah. and my forearms like it's, it's horrible yeah but we will we will get back into the routine of it and get back into the swing of it and it will be fine and we'll we'll feel we'll feel good we'll feel good again yeah exactly i'm excited to go back yeah well i've got uh, a couple of things to share about my week um that i haven't told you offline actually i've i've had a, a week of purchasing uh, and a week of being tempted by the temptress that is tim cook from apple so i bought um i bought a new uh, usb well new thunderbolt dock uh bought a cow digit ts3 plus uh which is a 15 port expansion for um you know by way of thunderbolt so um i haven't actually properly hooked it up yet but i needed some additional ports i basically needed like a couple of additional ports and i thought you know what i'll just buy the most ridiculous one i can find um because that's that's what i do right uh, and so I got that and it's uh, it's really well built. It's like a big slab of aluminium or steel or whatever it is. And, uh, vibranium, yeah, yeah. Vibranium, yeah. It is really heavy, to be fair. So um, no idea what it's made of, but it's really kind of good construction. So I will let you know how that goes. And uh, well, there's not really a lot to report on a, on a, on a kind of a USB port dock thing. Um, but it's got like an SD card. It's got headphone jack. It's got loads of USB ports. It's got It's got everything you need. Ethernet um you know you need it it's got it apart from hdmi i actually wow <laughs> just no hdmi it's got display port but no hdmi it's like ah, we don't need that i had a bit of an issue with mine because uh i'm not going to name and shame but i bought one off amazon and uh just the build quality was just subpar like it works yeah, but this but is what you do it feel solid this is yeah. this is well on brand for dan short you buy a crap chinese thing off of amazon yeah and you're like oh it didn't work very well it's like yeah because you you have to buy the good one it was mid-range why it's 30 quid (laughs) (laughs) that's funny a quick kind of programming note we're recording this on the 24th of april and on the 20th of april uh apple uh unveiled a number of new products uh they unveiled uh, a new imac using the m1 chip we've we've Mm -hmm. both got m1 computers and we love them they also unveiled a new iPad uh, using the M1 chip as well, which is Oofed. looks really, really cool. 
Um, and they also announced the uh, air tags, which are the, uh, the the little these little pucks that you put on your keys or in a bag. There's there's been a number of these kind of floating around in the in the market over the last few years, and um, Apple have now released their um, their sort of gambit into that market. And I've made some purchases. I have bought a four pack of of air tags, and I've bought some of the little leather loop things that i can attach to my bag and my keys and stuff and i'm gonna go pick them up on friday and i'm actually really excited to see them because they look pretty cool i have another confession to make i am seriously consider considering uh trading up my ipad pro and my old macbook pro against a new 12.9 inch ipad pro as well i skipped out on the 2020 version i've got a 2018 ipad pro i only bought the 64 gig version and it really struggles with storage. I just I compl- I bought it based basically thinking that oh you know I'll just work on it and all I do is documents and emails. I won't need anything uh, anything too powerful in terms you of storage. Fool. And <laughs> and my iPhone has sixty four gigabytes of storage and I only use thirty gigabyte. Uh, and then I started a podcast and then I and <laughs> and then I record video and edit video on it and it's like okay well my use case when I bought it is very different to the use case that I have now. So. Uh, the impact of that is I just struggle with storage. So I feel like I need an upgrade and it's a good excuse to do it. So I am going to probably take my iPad and my MacBook Pro when I visit the Apple Store on Friday, which is when they're available for pre-order and trade up and see what I can do. So yeah, I'm going to be spending some money over the next week, which I'm very excited about. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Shall we do win of the week? Yes, please. Fantastic. So, as regular listeners will know, Win of the Week is a segment at the top of each show where we get to share something that's happened this week that we'd like to celebrate, just to make sure we start our conversation on a positive note. We post a reminder on our platforms every Friday, so if you'd like to share your Win of the Week with us, and we'd be delighted to hear about your wins. I love all of these positive uh, po- you know, messages of positivity that we get. Um, you can tag us on your post on Twitter or Instagram with our handle, which is at ThriveGuysPod, or with the hashtag Win of the Week. So, Dan, why don't you kick us off this week with your Win of the Week? So my Win of the Week is the rebrand of Danbot. So you remember last week we talked in depth about automation and all the quirky stuff I'd been working on. I do highlighted, (laughs) I highlighted in that lecture that uh, I did not like Dan Bot. As a name, as a brand. As a person, he was lovely. But as a brand, I just didn't like it. It's like, as we kind of alluded to, it was a bit like, you know, well, I'm creating a bot. My first name's Dan. Let's just uh, Dan Bot. Easy. And when we were talking, I was like, it is very difficult to try and rebrand because I've got like custom HTML formatting and stuff like that. Yeah. But I decided I'm just going to go for it. And uh, it's fully rebranded to Automate. I much prefer Automate, you know, Automate rather yeah, than yeah. Danbot. I think it's much better. Um, so, yeah, I think you've you done well there, to be fair. You've done well. So it just works really well in terms of just saying like powered by Automate or yeah. Dan Shorts Automate instead of just saying. So then people can still contact me if they have any questions. But mm. yeah, we're looking at setting up like a custom email alias at work and stuff. So that Brilliant. was my win. Um, climbing was also a big win for me. I, I loved being back and I didn't feel like I'd lost out too much. We were still doing some good climbs. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm really grateful for that being open and being able to go back. Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, my win of the week is you know, adjacent to that. It's 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 related to climbing. Um, it's more general, just about kicking back my exercise routine off. Kicking off my exercise routine again. It's probably a better way of saying it. Whilst I've um, picked up a great habit of walking every morning, and I've done that pretty consistently for the last year, one thing that I did fall off the wagon with was running and you know other strength based exercise so during last summer we were climbing two or three times a week i was running three times a week i was smashing it you could say smashing life and that sort of fell off the fell off the the radar a little bit when it got cold and everything closed down because you know we were in uh, lockdown version three so um being able to go out running again because it's a little bit warmer is what, what was nice and it's and, you know i just need to make sure that i'm consistent with it going forward but i'm quite quite chuffed with myself that i managed to actually get out of bed and put my running shoes on and run 5k 
with without stopping still. So that was cool. Good. So I'm quite That's happy awesome. with that. But uh, I, I have noticed, as I mentioned at the top of the top of the discussion today, that my muscles have atrophied somewhat when it comes to climbing. So that's that's the way it goes. I'm really excited about today's episode. This is the start of a five part series where we have selected four productivity life hacks that we are going to put through their paces to answer the most important question. Will it stick or will it slip? So we are going to put ourselves through the ringer over the next uh, over the next few weeks so that you don't have to dear listener and we're going to report back on which of the most popular productivity hacks are actually worth bothering with so yeah i'm i'm really really stoked on this and i think when we were talking about the um about about this idea and doing this sort of theme over the next uh, next few episodes um i think we both got quite quite enthused for sure I mean, I really, I think it's worth highlighting the title of this. I love it. It's a, a new entry, the Productivity Hack Experiment. The Hack Experiment. Yeah, it was a, it was a half six coffee fueled <laughs> idea that because uh, we had it, we've done this, we've done this a few times now, right? We did it with episode six, um, which was all about uh, battle our battle stations, and uh, the working title started started with desks yeah me old desk and uh this uh this episode started with setting goals <laughs> and, so, and so we just needed to make it a little bit more jazzy i thought so yeah productivity hack experiment there we are so the question is what are the four productivity hacks that we're going to focus on over the next few weeks so we're going to be doing cold shower every morning yep waking up at four thirty a.m Oh, ring, ding, ding. Yep. Meditation and intermittent fasting. So anyone who's done any sort of research into how to become more productive and focused in your day will have stumbled across these life hacks being touted by some of the biggest names in the self-improvement industry. Um, and so we're going to piggyback off of that popularity, I suppose. <laughs> um, but on today's episode, we haven't done any, any of this yet. So today, we are going to go through them one by one kind of at a high level rather than sort of into into the you know, the, the minutiae of the detail because this is just our kind of initial impressions. And we're going to set the rules of engagement using the Thrive Guys 3Ps framework, patent pending. Triple P. The triple P framework. And that is, firstly, purpose. What is the touted benefit of said productivity hack? So what are we supposed to get out of it? Prediction. What do we believe our actual experience is going to be? You know, will it stick? Will it slip? And practice, that is setting up the conditions of the experiment. So what are we actually going to do? What are we going to record? How are we going to evaluate whether this is, you know, a good thing or a bad thing? You know, how are we going to test these fairly? So does that sound like a good, a good, uh, a good subject to spend some time in today? What do you think, Dan? As always, Joe, I'm excited. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. shaking in my boots. Excellent. I love it. That's so good. So I think we should start with cold showers. I think that's what we're going to start um, you know, firstly with in terms of... Get the worst so one out of the way. Get the worst one out of the way first. Um, I mean, maybe we, we'll, keep, we'll keep going with it you know, for the forevermore. I would be very surprised if that happened. So I first heard about taking cold showers from uh, a YouTube person, uh, Matt Diavella. Uh, he did a YouTube video about how he did it for 30 days and uh, he hated it to start with, but you know, found value in it um, longer term. He didn't stick with it, though, interestingly. So um, I think that is uh, some foreshadowing yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of, of what we're going to find. <laughs> so originally, I thought it was bananas. It's like, how can this be of benefit to anybody? And I still think it's bananas until um, yeah, I was preparing for today's show. And Kaylee told me about the Wim Hof method. I mean, have you heard of the Wim Hof method? Yeah, cold method? therapy. Weirdly, I, I go for a dog walk and there's a, a fella called Gary. I don't know his last name. Right. And he told me about this. We right. would just, we, we walk and talk sometimes. You know, we stay socially distanced, but we, he has like five dogs and we end up walking around and talking together. And right. he mentioned that name. So I've had it on my list of um, books to read. So I'm aware of the name and I'm aware of the cold therapy as a whole. But yeah, it's on my list of books to read because he mentioned it recently. Interesting. I yeah, didn't know that. So that's good. I'm, I'm glad we're aligned here because 
I had it was it was nebulous in in the old grey matter. I kind of heard of him, and I you know he just struck me as one of these you know hippy dippy types that um, <laughs> hippy dippy <laughs> tout these insane. <laughs> you know processes and it's it's you know they're like oh yeah you know i i wake up at 2 a.m and i i whip myself with a a eucalyptus branch or something and and that means that i can you know execute on all of my hopes and dreams and it's like i thought he was to me that's i mean i just made that up but that that was my kind of initial um initial impression but the more i researched it the more it started to really kind of interest me and it's like okay this is starting to sound really quite cool so there was a, a quote that i picked up off of uh, the wim hof methods website that i just wanted to wanted to touch upon here so they tout that frequent exposure to cold and this is the quote is linked to a number of different health benefits for example scientists have found evidence that exposure to cold speeds up metabolism yes another benefit of exposing your body to cold is that it reduces inflammation swelling and sore muscles Therefore, many athletes use ice baths and other type of exposure to, as to cold as uh, as a means to speed up recovery after physical exercise. I wish I'd have known about that after climbing. I would have yeah, put me my, too. my arm straight into an ice bucket. Exactly. And uh, just to finish off the quote, furthermore, cold body therapy is also linked to improved quality of sleep, more focus, and even to an improved immune response. Now, the bit that really interested me was that last sentence, you know, yeah. linked to improved quality of sleep and more focus. You, you know, from, from our previous conversations that I struggle a little bit with sleep. And I, I mean, I always want to be more focused. So I think if this is true, I think this is going to be the one that I perhaps stick with over all of the others i don't know what do you think dan well i have an interesting anecdote here in okay. that i've heard about cold cold showers as far as far back as when i was 15 years old so right. a, a girl i was dating mentioned just straight up i don't i don't really remember the context of this i was 15 years old for, for christ's sake but it's, it's burned in my memory and right. she told me that cold showers increase your metabolism. So I was buzzing. I'm unsure if she was just kind of trying to tell me I was overweight or something at the time. But I've <laughs> always known. And I've, that, you know, you just have like those reserved memories where I've always just thought, if I think about a cold shower or my shower's cold, I'm like, oh, well, at least my metabolism is going up. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's, that is, see, I never knew that until I just started looking up, looking up on yeah. it in preparation for today's episode. But, but it's interesting that you've had that, you know, almost held but not believe but held information for yeah. all that time maybe it's because it's quite triggering because i mean I, I never knew you when you were 15 but i don't know whether you were slightly on the chunky side or not but not particularly but I, I mean i've got a list here of what's kind of great about cold showers and i think you've kind of covered it off anyway but there's um some extra bits here in terms of that it calms itchy skin apparently it helps people overcome the sensation to scratch okay and we all know that itching is a big barrier to productivity. So that's, yeah. that's good. <laughs> um, waking you up is the next point. That's what's great about cold showers. It wakes you up because you're freezing. Mm. You know, you shock your body. The cold spray just increases your oxygen, oxygen intake, heart rate, and, you know, increases your alertness. So next time, you know, you're being unproductive on the podcast, I get Kaylee to run in and throw a cup of water in your face. <laughs> Excellent. And, it, it, you know... I've mentioned it increases circulation and blood flow. Yeah. A bit of research shows that this is kind of one of the top reasons for a cold shower, apparently, um, because it can actually help prevent cardiovascular disease. Wow. Yep. Um, And yeah, this is the point that kind of triggered that memory is that it says it potentially helps you to boost weight loss. Yeah. Some fat cells can generate heat by burning fat, but they do that when your body's exposed to cold conditions. So it kind of makes up to you know what my ex-girlfriend was saying all that all those years ago so <laughs> yeah if you're if you're listening to this you were right <laughs> yeah. uh researchers have kind of aligned here because yeah. um you know cold showers apparently in, in addition to increasing your metabolic rate um stimulate the generation of brown fat and yeah, uh, brown fat apparently is uh, a specific type of fat tissue that uh, generates energy by uh burning calories and so you know if you're trying to generate energy and keep keep warm uh, then that cold showers are an effective tool for people who are looking to lose a few pounds. That's not really kind of where my head's at. The the thing that really interested me is, uh, well, there's three things that I found on the, the, the Wim Hof um, website. There was reduced stress levels. And just to kind of dig into this a little bit, regularly taking cold showers apparently 
imposes a small amount of stress on your body so it's you know it's a stressful experience for your body which leads to a process called hardening and hardening is where your nervous system gradually gets used to handling moderate levels of stress so the kind of intrinsic benefit of that is because you're already used to you know being in a stressed state when you're then in a stressful situation at work or you know at home or whatever is supposed to help you keep a cool head next time you're in that kind of situation. Interesting. Yeah, your body just says, oh, this again. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's interesting because, well, I I totally get this, right? Because I'm in quite a, you know, what, was, what is perceived to be a high-stress job. But because I'm kind of, you know, exposed to that level of kind of, you know, pressure and scrutiny a lot, just by the way of, you know, being a quota-carrying you know, resource, right? That's just the nature of the the the, the beast. Mm-hmm. I am pretty horizontal in most other parts of my life. I don't feel stressed. I don't get, you know, I don't feel under pressure in other areas. So um, I align with that. I kind of, I feel that int- intuitively. I th- That kind of aligns with my experience. So if, if, if a cold shower can help with that, then interesting. The other thing that was quite interesting was um, higher levels of alertness. And you know, cold showers, you know, waking your body up. You've kind of, um, you've you've referred to that earlier, and the cold also stimulates apparently you to take deeper breaths, increasing the level of CO two throughout your body, helping you concentrate. So again, that that deep focus element, it all seems to play in. And I, I, this was actually this, this opened my eyes. I didn't realize yeah, yeah. that just taking a cold shower is going to have all of these benefits. Now, I say that with a pinch of salt because I got this from a website of someone who's trying to sell you all of these benefits so that you buy his little course thing, right? This is where my research kind of led me, and this is why I was a bit cautious about what I wanted to kind of expose in the podcast. But I, I know exactly what you're talking about. This is just what other people are saying. This is all publicly available information. We're not saying that you mm-hmm. should do this, dear listener, because these are all the benefits that, that, um, that yeah, you're yeah, going exactly. to get. We can't guarantee that because we've not done it yet, right? So um, I don't feel as, as concerned as you. No. And at the bottom line, Joe, all you have to do is get up in the morning and stand in the freezing cold and be splashed with freezing cold water. I just, I, not it, that it, much of a big deal. You just have to get freezing and just kind of get on with your day easy bish bash bosh well this is one thing that another the final point that i find really interesting about this is that uh, apparently it's it's going to increase your willpower so <laughs> it take it that so the quote is on their <laughs> website it takes a strong mind to endure the cold for extended periods of time by incorporating cold showers into your daily routine you are strengthening your willpower which benefits many asp- aspects of your daily life so again, you know, if we're doing this first is good because when we then get to intermittent fasting, then having that little 11, 11 a.m. biscuit, I don't, I won't need to do it because <laughs> I'm having cold showers all the time. Happy days. There you go. It's going to be a breeze. So uh, I've got two points that are things we probably need to consider as a part of this test. Okay. This activity. Right. Go on. It- <laughs> Cold showers don't really have a, su- a substantial impact with all the stuff that you're talking about if you're already cold. Right. Because but, it's the whole, the, the tra- you know, the uh, difference. Yeah, it's the shock to the, the system. Disparity, but yeah. yeah, exactly. If yeah. you're warm in bed and you get up and then you have a cold shower, that's like the prime time, right? Whereas, for ex- you know, for example, if I've gone out for a walk in the cold and it's, you know, minus five or whatever and I come back in, and then decide, oh, I'm freezing. Now I'm just going to go get in a cold shower. You're not going to have that same impact because it's the no. shock that kind of gives you the value from it. So that was one thing to consider. The second was just, you know, from a safety perspective, if anyone is listening and anyone does want to try it, people have been saying that it's not really a good idea if you have a cold as it is still hard on your immune system. It will strengthen your immune system, but it's quite a difficult thing to to take. Right. So if you're okay. feeling bunged up and stuff and you're not feeling too well, just skip on the cold showers because the the hot showers actually have a benefit in terms of like decongesting you and you know yeah. making you feel better so okay cool good advice i mean the the first point is well you're doing your cold therapy by being outside aren't you i suppose um, yeah. so you're kind of you're you're netting a benefit there and uh yeah second point's a good one so let's evaluate these against the three p's triple right? p Pat- pattern pending <laughs> so the purpose of this <laughs> is Reduce stress, higher alertness, better immune system, which is kind of hard to measure, but it is a benefit. 
increased willpower and weight loss. So, you know, there's a there's a five a five prong benefit system there. I don't know whether I missed anything there. I think no, I think no, that's no. that's Spot fair on. as a this is what all of the this is what Mr. Hoff says that you're going to get by ex- exposing yourself to cold temperatures. So So this is our purpose, right? I think we can both align that's what I mean. that's yeah. the purpose. That's yeah, the yeah. first that's exactly. the first piece. That's that's the, pu- the, that's the purpose. That's what we're being told is the benefit so that's why we're doing it because we want all of those things right correct so dan why don't you start with your prediction of how you think you're going to get on with this i think this is going to be hell on earth to start with because just even the thought of getting into a cold shower is daunting for me yeah um i do suspect that my mornings will improve after maybe the first the first half of the week Mm. um and i do suspect that in having a cold shower, the only real benefit I'm going to get from it is that my mornings are going to be a bit sped up, I guess. Yeah. Um, that I'll probably sit down at my desk and I'll be able to crack on with quite a hefty amount of work before nine o'clock or, you know, just after nine o'clock. And then it will just be feel like a normal day. Yeah. That's how I, I kind of predict it's going to happen for me. I might experience some of the extra benefits. I might lose a stone. I might lose 15 stone. Who knows? <laughs> well, <laughs> What, are you going to lose a leg? <laughs> well, you don't know. It could, yeah. it could happen. Frostbite. Frostbite. <laughs> you haven't seen my shower, Joe. <laughs> could go oh. down into the negatives. Yeah. Um, what about yourself? Okay, I have three predictions. Number one, it will be cold and I will hate it. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. That's there's a fact. Nothing more, there's nothing more I could say. It's going to be cold <laughs> and I'm going to hate it. And it's not going to get better and I will always hate it. One of the joys of life is having a nice warm shower. So yeah, doing yeah. the opposite of it is going to be unpleasant. It will wake me up in the morning. And I think it may help me feel more alert in the morning. One of the things that I struggle with a little bit is kind of getting going. And you know the things that I do with my boot up routine and and all of that sort of stuff that I've talked about in previous episodes is all to try and get me going. You know, get me in a positive mindset. Get me in the you know, not feeling like I'm tired behind the eyes and and all of that sort of thing. And I think that actually from a physiological point of view, this will play into that and this will sort of support that process. I mean, I can't see it not because it's going to be horrific. (laughs) So my third prediction is based on all of the research I've done, right? It sounds great. It sounds awesome. I can't see it changing my life in a meaningful way. I just, I, I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I'm not buying what they're selling. It was interesting to read about it, but the more I read, the more I was like, oh, this sounds amazing. This sounds like the cure for everything. And then my little kind of, my little alarm bell went off went off and went, hang on a minute. This is just the cold shower. How can it, you know, <laughs> materially change your life in, in all of these amazing ways? I don't buy what you're selling. So well, we'll Especially see. when there's no, you know, I couldn't find any documentation that was saying stuff like, you know a cold shower for three minutes a day versus 10 minutes a day would give you more of those benefits and more because otherwise i could just jump in the shower hit the cold button spritz that's it five seconds i'm done i'm clean enough and i'm out or do i have to stand in there for 10 minutes and just suffer shivering at the bottom of my you know in my bathtub going i feel so much better now it's like you know (laughs) if there was that kind of tangible result from it it would be useful because you could be like right i just need to stand here for five minutes and make sure i'm clean and then i'm going to start experiencing results but because everyone's just like yeah have a cold shower have a cold shower that'll help you the the wim hof website seems to point towards loads of scientific research but um, maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough, hard enough, but I couldn't find any of it. So, you know, it's like science proves. It's like, but who's science? Like, where are these people? Like, you know, so that is the prediction. So let's talk about practice. What are we going to do? So I have a proposition that I would like to run past you uh, for your approval. And then, you know, if there's anything you'd like to add, then please do. So. I propose that this experiment will last for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm on board. Okay. The first three days, we ease into it from a hot start and cold at the end to fully cold. Because going fully cold is uh, not advised from the reading that I've done. So basically, we start with a a normal warm shower. And then right at the end, we just crank it the other way and stand under it for as long as we can survive. Right. And then that bit gets longer 
every time yeah. and we might do you know not to expose my shower routine but i do the shower gel bit at the end so maybe i do my shower gel bit on the second day when it's really cold and then uh the the third day i do the face wash bit because it's you know shampoo face wash shower gel that's my my three-step program that is how i shower every day there you go so and then you know when it's fully cold i do the shampoo the face wash the shower gel that's kind of in my mind possible (laughs) yeah exactly as quickly as possible like when i had a shower this morning i was in there for like 12 minutes which is pretty long for me and i was just like ah i know that come monday i'm going to be in here for maybe 15 percent of the time because it's going to be so horrific uh, so that is kind of the, the process. So we keep it consistent across the two of us. Then, then in terms of the recording, the the measure of success, we use a mark out of ten for the four sort of intrinsic benefits that we uh, that we'll see. So I, I say four because there is there is nothing that we can really do to measure a better immune system, and so I'm excluding that from the measurement. So out of 10, at the end of every day, I want us to measure our stress level, our alertness, our willpower, and if we so choose, our recorded weight as well. That's up to you in terms of how you want to do it. I'm happy to exclude that and just do the stress, alertness, willpower. Let's do it. So it's going to be a bit of a self-evaluation uh, piece, but if we record that over the two weeks, then you know we can talk about what we feel anecdotally about it. Um, but we've also then got some data uh, in a Notion database that we can then review and say, okay, is there a trend going up over time? Sound good? Yeah, it sounds wicked. Okay, anything to add? And I'm on, no, I'm on board with all of those points, and I completely agree that we can't track, you know, immune system. Um, and a rating out of ten is like a good way to see a trend um, yeah. across, you know, the the two weeks. Um, and I don't, I don't really know what it's going to show me, so I'm quite excited. I think it's going to show you absolutely nothing. Yeah, if you do it at the honest. start of the day, you're just going to say, oh, you know, cold shower, that was a one. I hate yeah. it. And that's that's a fact. I don't, mm-hmm. you know, as much as these researchers and these people say it's good for you, I don't feel like any of them wake up, jump in a cold shower and say, do you know what, this is the life. No. Maybe under a waterfall, you go, right, I can I can stomach this. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit different though, isn't it? Because there's something nice around you and, and it's not. Yeah, it's an experience. Yeah. But jumping in your, your shower and by choice putting it to cold just seems bonkers to me. Yeah, agreed. So for, for my practice as well, I've, I've kind of got to think about when I'm going to have my shower because the way my routine works at the moment is I get up early, I go take the dog for a walk. So I'm already pretty cold yeah. depending on the weather. Then I come home and have my shower and get ready for work and then get, you know, get my clean clothes on because it's part of my routine of just getting you know fresh, getting ready to yep. sit down at my desk. So... It's then working out if I want to sh- now start showering before and just get into my work clothes and go for a walk. Cause it's the case of just putting different shoes on. It's not an issue. But yeah. that was the only thing that I kind of considered being an issue with putting it into practice. Um, another concern and something that we probably need to agree between the two of us is like shower temperature because your cold versus my cold might be completely different. Like my shower goes from one to nine, right? Yeah. Yours could go from one to a hundred. And if we're both putting it on one, are we experiencing the same kind of temperature or are we saying, let's pop it in the middle and say, right, let's go to, you know, a five just to be sure. Oh no, it's the, it's turn it until you can't turn it anymore to the cold. Good. Right. So then we're agreed. Yeah. That's cold. Not all oh, little. Yeah. Oh, it's just, oh, it's a bit cold. Oh, oh <laughs> no, it's, you know, the whole way. Right. <laughs> wow. I'm on board. Fine. I don't want to, but I'm going to. For the sake of science. For the sake of science. For the sake of our listeners, we are going to experience the pain so you don't have to. So, next up, waking up at 4.30 a.m. So, I'm excited about this. Sorry to kind of just jump straight in, but I am in, enthused. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just so excited about it because this seems like something that quote unquote successful people do across the board if you do some research it seems like anyone that's successful and let's you know i'm not just going to pick like fortune 500 ceos and stuff but yeah people that are successful in all aspects of life seem to get up early and just crack on yeah um I, you know there was something a guy called tim denning said and this is a quote that kind of rang true he says the time you wake up has a lot to do with who you become 
So if you force yourself to get up and do the things you want to do before work, you're already setting yourself on a path to kind of succeed because you're doing the things that you want to do before you get into the activities of your job requirement and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm eagerly anticipating what this is going to be like because I'm I feel I have mixed emotions. I feel it's going to be tricky because I've trained myself into being a morning person. I'm not naturally a morning person. Um, and 6.30 is challenging enough sometimes. So cutting two hours off of that is going to be interesting. So I first heard about this when I stumbled across some Business Insider clickbait article. <laughs> You've probably seen these on the internet, like Business Insider, Forbes and Inc. and all of yeah, these yeah. like like quote unquote news websites that are basically just clickbait. Um, they uh, interviewed an ex Navy SEAL called Jocko Willink and why he wakes up at 4.30 a.m. And you know, most other Navy SEALs do this same process. So I retraced my steps in prepping for this ep episode and um, I went into a bit of a Jocko Willink rabbit hole. Uh, he's got a podcast. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, he talks about loads of different things, and it's uh, he's quite an inspirational guy. Actually, he he's got a lot of uh, the you know get up and you know smash today kind of um, philosophies. I like that. that yeah. um, I'm I'm for uh, you know it's it's good it's good viewing to it's one of those it's one of those pieces of content that makes you feel like you're being productive by watching it, even though you're absolutely not, uh, which is dangerous in and of itself, right? For sure, there's a there's a really good quote, um, and I think it's half related to the uh, to the Marine Corps or to Navy SEALs. Right. Um, I can't remember who said it. I don't you know don't know the name off off the top of my head, but it's a quote that kind of sits in my mind. Um, and it's from one of these speeches, and the guy just says, um, "If you want to change the world, start by making your bed." Yeah. And I love that because it's like get up and you know sort yourself out and just go out and do it. And I, I love that. So I think that maybe that's a podcast I'll have to have a listen to. Yeah, they do say that um, making your bed and starting the the day with a win sets yourself up for the rest of the day. And this kind of, the principle of that plays into waking up early as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that, that, you know, what Jocko says in terms of, look, this is the reason why I do it. And you know, I preface this with, this is more about setting a consistent wake up time rather than it being horrifically early. However, we already have a consistent wake up time. We both wake up broadly at the same time every morning. So I yeah. thought, well, we already do that. Let's take it to the next level and give ourselves some extra time in the morning when no one else is around. And that plays into it, the first benefit. You are up before everyone else is up. So, you know, this is an uninterrupted amount of time that you can do the things that normally during the day you get too distracted to do. You know, so for Jocko, his example is working out. He'll go to the gym like, like first thing in the morning. But for other people, it could be anything. It could be that passion project that you're work that you're working on, or it could be, um, you know, just having time for yourself to think and journal and set your intentions for the day uh, before the day gets crazy. So, and I love that, and I think that's that's interesting and something that I'm eager to see what that will be like for me. So, me and friend of the show, David Bogner, when we were back in London, uh, working in London, we. You, we started a routine of getting up at honestly i think it was about quarter to five in the morning getting ready and going to the gym in london mm. before work so then we could go up to our desk and still have like an hour ready to, yeah. to start work and you'd think right you're getting up super early you, you must be tired by about three o'clock and you know be quite finished but actually we had like this renewed cell you know this renewed sense of energy and just kind of this attitude towards just let's get it done like you feel yeah. like you've accomplished something before the day and going to the gym was something you were passionate about like you think well i'm getting less sleep but actually because you've been active and stuff you don't really tend to to notice that so it's something i've tried but not half four every day and making it consistent but i really do yeah. hope it's something that i can stay consistent with yeah they do that they talk a lot on his podcast about you know the better shape you're in the less sleep they feel like you need like it's it's not scientifically proven but it's it's based on anecdotal experience from them um so that's quite interesting uh actually and yeah it kind of plays into the second point with it building discipline yeah and you know he says himself that it doesn't feel good getting up at 4 30 you know he doesn't wake up going oh i just love this but it's building discipline it's doing the uncomfortable thing 
because you know it's the best thing to do for you, right? Well, well that's what people don't seem to realise about like an early morning person. They're like, I can't believe you're a morning person. It's like, I'm not, I'm not a morning person, but I'm no. up every morning regardless. I, like when my alarm goes off, I just, I get up. I don't sit there and I don't snooze and I don't kind of go, oh, I could do with an extra half hour. I just get up, that's it. It doesn't make me a morning person, but when people see that, they're like, weren't you up at half five this morning? Because when I do early shift, I get up at literally like five o'clock and go for right. like, either a run or a walk. And I just kind of feel like people put that on a pedestal. Like, all right, well, you, you must just be a morning person. It's like, well, that's taken, you know, willpower or going, mm. you know, you sacrifice an early night, you sacrifice going out or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's not just something that's, you know, assigned to you intrinsically that I'm, you know, you're either a morning person or a, you know, a late, a night owl or whatever they call them. Yeah. Well, as I said, I'm not, a, I'm not naturally a morning person. I've had to sort of, you know, gradually get myself into the situation that I'm in now where it's 6 30 every day without fail um and you know if the the cult the whole kind of principle is around discipline is if you got up at 4 30 a.m hit the gym did a run smashed out a load of work before 9 9 a.m you know the idea is that you're equally less likely to give in to you know when someone in the office brings in a tray of donuts that they're offering you for free and you're like, ooh, yeah, but it's a bit rude if I say no. But actually, that discipline that you've built yourself throughout the day, every day, will give you that willpower to say, no, I'm all right. You know, I don't need that. And that strength will give you the, the strength to slap the donuts out of your hands. <laughs> Bam, gone. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. If you know, Wherever floats your boat, dude. You know, if you want to just be violent as a, as a result of getting... I mean, maybe you're just grumpy. Maybe that, you know, you say you're not a morning person. Maybe that, maybe that plays into it. <laughs> so let's, let's evaluate this against the three Ps, the triple P, right? The the All right, so the first P is purpose. So we're talking about increased discipline. We're talking about increased fulfillment as a result of getting something done that's important to you during that time. We're talking about um, overcoming a big challenge, setting a uh, setting yourself up for a let's win mindset. You know, you're over you're overcoming that comfy pillow and bed, and you're starting the day in the right way. So that that is what they're touting as the benefits of waking up early, waking up at four thirty a.m. Are we agreed on that? Correct. Okay. Agreed. So Dan, what's your prediction? How how is this actually going to uh, going to work for you? So I've changed my um alarm to be five o'clock for early shift sometimes when i start at seven right and i did not find it difficult um so i i truly hope and i truly believe that it's not going to be a difficult challenge because i feel kind of excited about it already right. um and you know my prediction is that i will aim to exercise most of those mornings and okay. I'll do my journal because normally I do my journal just before work and kind of fill in little bits throughout the day. But yeah. I feel like it'll be a good time to just sit and spend some time on my own doing my journal with no distraction. So that's how I predict it being that it's going to be a nice time to kind of just get on with it. I don't think it's going to be easy, you know, but I, I feel like I've got enough framework built around me and stuff to do that I'm not just going to wake up at, you know, 4.30 and just sit there twiddling my thumbs or sit on the iPad. I'm going to be up and out the door within 15 minutes doing exercise, whether that's right. running. The other prediction I'm kind of, uh, well, I, I'm aiming for is that I want to go climbing. Climbing opens yeah. at half six. So if I'm up at half four, I'd like to get my journal done, do my Spanish lessons, do all the stuff that I'm, that's, you know, built into my habits framework. And then I want to go and do something a couple of days like climbing because there's enough time in the day that I would have done all the stuff that I need to do. Um, go climbing, come back and then start work ready with nice. all my tasks set up. So that's that. kind of, yeah, that's what I predict it being, but... Can I come see. with you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Excellent. 6.30 a.m. they do like a, a cheap hour or something like that and early birds. Yeah, so that's what kind of inspired me. I asked you now so you couldn't say no because how could you say no on, on a Thrive Guys episode? You <laughs> could not say no. You know, that would, it would shatter the the months of, of lies that we've put up around us being actual friends. We've spoken many times about me being a yes man. <laughs> yeah. And then I just say, nah, it's all right, mate. Sorry nah, about that. Oh, sorry, mate. Not going today. And then you go on that on the DL and I'm there <laughs> because I've got on my Todd. And you're, nah, and you're I like, need some company. I need somebody yeah. to make sure I'm actually climbing the wall. Yeah, not just snoozing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, the floors there are soft, so it's kind of a good, good place yeah. to be. You fall and then you instantly, you know, 
before your head hits the floor, <laughs> you're like <laughs> asleep. So I have two predictions. Yeah, go on. Number one, I will be tired. <laughs> Sounds obvious, but I think this is, you know, I'm going to be tired. The first couple of days are going to be difficult. When's your prediction of when you're going to be tired? What first thing you wake up, you're just going to feel tired or... All the time. You know, if, if you've ever had a bad night's sleep, and this is where I struggle a little bit with sleep, you know, quality of sleep over... You know, so it doesn't take me long to get off to sleep, but um, I wake up really early in the night and it impacts how I feel during the whole day. Um, actually, I usually start feeling quite alert and awake when it gets to the evening because naturally I'm a night owl and that's where, you know... But I don't want that doesn't align with how I want to live my life. I want to mm. relax in the evening and get stuff done in the morning. Do you know what I mean? I want to yeah, kind of yeah, like sure. get the get the good stuff done in the morning and then unwind in the afternoon and the evening. That's kind of how I want to be. So I'm having to rewire my brain in order to in order to achieve that. So I will be tired. I think I will get into the flow of it though. And I think crucial to that, absolutely crucial to that, is going to bed at a sensible time i need to make sure that i am not just getting less sleep because i am not the sort of person that can survive on four or five hours of sleep i'm just not not sustainable as well throughout the whole experiment oh for sure but some people can and great for you if you can survive on five or six hours sleep i'm not that guy that's anyone under the age of 20 mate when i was 18 i could survive on an hour's sleep and go back to work i I have always been like this i've always liked my sleep i used to stay up later but now i'm a little older and a little you know i'm, I'm not quite as good as uh as 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 the young whippersnappers at, uh at staying up late anymore so it gets to quarter to 10 and uh i'm i'm yawning yawning my little head off you know ready for the land of nod uh so i think going to bed earlier is going to be absolutely fundamental and actually i think that's the bit that requires discipline and so i'm quite excited to see you know how that will how that will pan out so how are we going to put this into practice, Dan? I, again, just like before, I've got a proposition that I want uh, your approval on. And if you want to add anything, then feel free. Does that sound good? Yeah, you go. I'm all ears. Right. So I am going to use my Apple Watch as a silent alarm. Because if you wear it while you're asleep, not only can you track your sleep, which is useful data, which I think we should we should do, just to make sure we're getting the same amount of sleep as we were before. We're not just you know absolutely rinsing ourselves just by having two s two less hours of sleep. It also is a haptic alarm, so it's silent. So our re- respective other halves are not going to kill us as part of this experiment because that would then be an automatic fail if we were dead. Well, you fixed one of the issues that I had attributed to my practice, which was. I feel like putting this into practice is going to be a real stress on my relationship. And I'd fully intended, like when I started speaking to Kerry about it, she was not happy. No. You know, she's normally very happy for me, but she just said, you're going to get up at 4 a.m. And I said, no, 4.30. She said, you're going to get up at 4.30 a.m. I said, yeah. And she was like, you're going to wake me up. And I was like, probably. <laughs> and then the conversation... <laughs> <laughs> took a dark turn and I figured yeah. I'm probably going to end up sleeping on the sofa downstairs for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, I've just solved a problem for you, my friend. There you go. No, you fixed my relationship. So thank you. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. <laughs> so I'll bring this back to our core principles in terms of the stuff that we usually talk about on here and talk about an app. So oh, we're going to talk about an app on, on this episode. Who would have thought? Uh, there we go. So I have consistently used an app called Sleep Cycle for the last probably six years maybe longer and since i had an apple watch they have an apple watch app that then tracks your sleep so it records how much time you have in bed and accurately records how much sleep you get and gives you a percentage so i would suggest um getting a short-term subscription to that over the next couple of weeks i think it's like a pound a month or something like that it's not a lot at all um so then you've got a a haptic alarm the nice thing about the haptic alarm for the sleep cycle piece is it you set a half an hour window and it wakes you up when you're the most awake yeah i use aurora for that yeah there you go okay so you've got your own app fine do what you want but no i'm going to use sleep cycle for you know the same results i think it's a good good benchmark 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we're going to try and make this as scientific experiment as possible, so that you know, dear listener, you have some meaningful, tangible information that you can make decisions on. So we're going to track sleep and share sleep data for the period of two weeks, like the other, like the other one, and we record our mood every morning. That is my proposition for how we record the practice of this. How does that? Uh, how does yeah. that sound to you? I'm on it. Cool. Anything to add? Nope. I think they're they're good benchmarks. I think they're, yep. they're really. You know, I'm interested to see the results for that as well. So. Mm. One thing you did mention in the show notes, though, which I thought was quite interesting, was around discipline around screen time and stuff, because I think that that is actually something that we will be need to be mindful of. I don't know whether you wanted to go through that. Yeah, I just feel like it's important to highlight that if you are going to start trying to have an earlier sleep time, you need to sacrifice certain things. And that might be, you know, you're not watching TV at seven o'clock at night. You're not on your phone from seven o'clock at night, whatever it is, because otherwise you might be in bed, but you're not really going to get the benefits of the whole getting up early thing. You're just going to be yeah. lying in bed on your phone, still falling asleep at your normal time of like half 11, whatever time you go to bed. Yeah. And then you're just going to be forcing yourself to get up early. And I, I really don't think you're going to get the benefit of being up early because you're just going to be a, a zombie walking around your house searching for coffee. Yeah. Okay. No, absolutely. I totally agree. Shall we talk about meditation? That's number three. I'm going to let you take this one, Dan. So it's pretty obvious. Everyone knows that meditation has been practiced for literally thousands of years. So yeah, it's clearly doing something. Um, and it's centered around the feeling of, you know, calm and self-reflection, which we're, we've interweaved into a lot of our topics that we talk about. Have you ever meditated before? I've tried. Right. You know, we talk about um, my erratic behavior, according to Kerry. I find it very, very difficult to get into that zone. So I do now I meditate before I go to sleep kind of thing. Okay. As in, I think that's a good time for self-reflection. So I'll put on meditation music, which comes with that. It doesn't come with, but it's like a part of the um, Aurora sleep app that I use. So I put an hour of meditation music on before I go to sleep and I just have it quietly in the background and I use it as a time to just kind of relax and think about my day or think about what I want to accomplish and just try and relax. But in the traditional sense of like sitting and just being alone with yourself, I have not oh. done <laughs> yeah. properly. And I do think it's something I would get a lot of value from. Mm. Um, so, you know, the main purpose of meditation for me is to kind of gain a better self-awareness and more control of my emotions. And I'm okay. hoping that it will lead to me having a more relaxed approach to some of the work I'm doing at the moment and some of the kind of scenarios that I'm exposed to, I guess. Yeah, I think I think you'll get that. I mean, just to share my experience before we jump to the PPP, um, I've bounced off meditation a few times over the years. And the reason why I was searching for something was as a way to manage my busy mind. I mean, I've talked about my busy mind before on previous episodes and, you know, to your point, it's been practiced for literally thousands of years, thousands of years by you know Buddhist monks and you know to to CEOs you know and everything mm -hmm. in between, and it's definitely had a resurgence in popularity as people's lives have become busier, more stressful, and more you know quote always on, and so I think that's probably why it's had it's so it's so popular as like a quote productivity hack. Um, I just wanted to share some of my research, actually, just in terms of um, what I read in terms of within the context of productivity and focus. Um, meditation is supposed to help us stay on task longer and feel less stressed when things get overwhelming. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a, a guided meditation app called Headspace. I have, yeah. But that's, that's actually part, that leads into my prediction later. So. so they say, quote, meditation not only deepens our concentration, it also lessens the mental effort needed to stay focused. One guided meditation productivity stu study described it as a, quote, state of concentrated calm or serene attention. Ooh, concentrated Serenity. calm is the name of an EP, to be honest. I know. Uh, anything, anything that's going to provide anything with the prefix of ser serene, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, take my money, please. So the quote goes on, goes on to say, in fact, one just one session of Headspace 
was shown to improve focus and reduce mind wandering by 22%. How on earth they measured that, I have no idea. But it sounds cool. It's a nice little strap line on their website to make you buy their app. So that's pretty good. <laughs> um, the thing that interested me the most, though, was the process called noting. And actually, this is quite this is quite a fundamental part of meditation from from you know what I've read and and I'll just share another quote before we jump onto the PPPs. Um, they say Headspace again being the they, they say that uh, during our practice the mind will inevitably wander off. So when you meditate, it'll inevitably wander off and and start thinking about things. Once we notice that our attention has wandered, we pause and identify the nature of the distraction. So you know that was me thinking or that was a feeling and they talk about labeling that distraction noting it hence noting helps us to disengage from it by creating space between the arising thought or feeling having noted the distraction there's a sense of having dealt with it which makes it easier to let it go and to gently return to the object of focus be that breathing during our meditation practice or the task at hand during the day and when that happens again, we simply apply the same approach. So it's kind of, you know, what meditation is teaching you, if I can kind of paraphrase that, is when you meditate, you kind of veer off target and then you kind of have to bring yourself back to your breathing. And that practice of veering off and then bringing your attention back will benefit you in in your daily life. That's kind of what they're generally thrusting at. Which to me, as someone who gets very easily distracted, as discussed in episode seven... <laughs> I'm all for it. And this is one of the yeah, reasons yeah. why I've tried to kind of make it a habit, but bounced off it so many times. So um, so why don't we go through the purpose? So, so sorry to, to just, I wanted to just share that as some additional uh, embellishment to uh, to that. Nice. It's really nice to hear. And I, it, I've got value just in the statement, concentrated calm, because like that's, that. that's what I strive to have now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to going to become super sane using concentrated calm. Concentrated calm. So, <laughs> So let's talk about the PPPs. The, the so purpose, um, increased focus, focus, reduced levels of stress. Anything to add there? Elevated calm concentration. Concentrated calm, <laughs> yes. Serene, what was it? Serene attention. That's what, what I want. <laughs> yeah. Give me, Ser give me, give me. <laughs> yeah, give me serene attention. I love it. Um, so what's your prediction, Dan? How do you think this is going to go for you? I know myself very well. I've spent a lot of time with myself and I know what my attention span's like. Like, you know, I talk about being productive and I do get a lot of stuff done, mm. but my attention span is very limited. Yeah. So I feel like I'm I'm really going to struggle to find like a nice ritual to, that's going to keep me engrossed. And that's fully my fault. That's not any app that's going to solve that. And I think it's, yeah. this is the one that's going to take the most discipline for me because the other tasks have been like physical, right? Get up early. Yeah get a cold shower, I can do that. Whereas meditation is the, the art of just breathing and doing nothing. And that's not mm. something I'm used to. Um, so I feel like it's going to be, you know, something I will enjoy after a while, but I'll probably start out with an attitude of like, just giving it a go, trying to sit there and sit on my yoga mat and go, right, I'm going to sit here for 10 minutes and just do nothing. And mm. I'm going to probably not be in that right headspace if I'm honest. And then I, I do feel like I'm going to end up moving towards a whole guided meditation piece where I'll get up and I'll just sit alone and do a guided meditation because I think that's probably more suited to who I am as a person. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't feel like stopping and kind of relaxing for a while. Uh, to paraphrase what my dad used to say, there's two types of people, the quick and the dead. So <laughs> <laughs> um, what about yourself? so morbid? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my dad's the same. He's got some men, like mad sayings that are just like, what are you, why are you so morbid? They, Who they stick you? with you. <laughs> yeah, they do. I mean, for me, this is one of the four that I'm most positive about because I've tried it before and I, I know that it will, it will benefit me. And I genuinely believe that the noting piece will, will help me. I'm, I'm actually really quite looking forward to it in terms of how, how, what difference will I see over doing it consistently for two weeks because I did it for three days and then bounced off and then did it for another couple of days and then bounced off, you know. Um, so I predict that this will be the one that I get the most value from. I'm going to I'm gonna say it now. 
I think this will be my winner. Did I ever tell you uh, or put you on to the Shakti mat? Yeah, I bought one. I yeah, bought one. That's what I'm going to try using because that's the time I felt most focused because it's basically little pins i'm just you know explaining for the listener it's yeah. not pins as such but it's like spikes that you lie on yeah um, and it comes up with all this stuff about increasing blood flow and all that sort of stuff which i mm. you know i don't really mind if you know i don't know if it's true or not but having lied on it it's like that's your single focus because you're like well my back kind of hurts but you just you're not thinking about anything else you're just lying on your back and kind of spending some time alone so i think that's how i'm going to push myself to actually meditate properly it's just like put that down and lie on it for maybe 20 minutes a night or something i don't really know when i'm going to do it yet but that's something we can discuss in the the third the yeah well nice segue excellent well done it's almost like we planned it so my proposal for practice that i uh i submit to you for approval good sir two weeks like the others agreed Mm mm-hmm fantastic we're either going to do guided meditation using an app or freestyle it's your choice i'm gonna go because i've still got a subscription to headspace that i never cancelled so i am going to jump right back into headspace and that's going to be the way that i approach this and uh the way that we record results this is going to be really difficult you know how can you record that you've increased your focus marks out of 10 probably can't so we should probably just do some sort of you know journal of of our experience it'd be nice to document i mean maybe it's a bit personal but you know document the things you thought about or didn't think about you know things that you'd potentially avoided it doesn't have to be you know some of them could be extremely deep thoughts but you can kind of well the idea is that you just focus on your your breathing and hope hopefully as the thoughts come and go they you just let them pass you by like uh like if you're sitting on the side of a road and watching the cars go by i like that so it just for me, it means that you'll see that like that will decline, hopefully, throughout the, the two weeks. You'll go from, yeah. I actually spent, you know, 30 minutes sat there thinking about this and thinking about the stuff I was doing at work and what was next. And then hopefully by the end of, you know, it might not be as, as quick as that, but you should hopefully see the decline. And the, the hope and goal is that you want to go, right, at the end of week two, I kind of was thinking about nothing and I was just meditating for the sake of it. And I was just enjoying that, you know, being at peace. Being present in the moment yeah so moving on to intermittent fasting the final furlong of our four-step productivity hack experiment full disclosure i know nothing about intermittent fasting so i'm going to let you take this one down yeah why don't you why don't you get us home mate why don't you get so us home? Th- this is really cool and actually something a few of my my close friends swear by uh, a few of my friends that hit the gym and stuff like that um, so the, the cool thing about intermittent fasting is it doesn't specify uh, like which foods you should eat, but rather when you should eat them. So obviously, again, fasting has been practiced throughout human evolution. So thousands and thousands of years. So ancient h- hunter gatherers didn't have, you know, Tesco's Lidl, Audi, Morrison's across the road available <laughs> all year round. So they, sometimes they couldn't find stuff to eat. So as a, as a result, humans evolved to be able to like function without food for extended periods of time. So it's kind of built into you as a, you know, as part of being a human. Right. Um, so there, there are different time frames which I urge you to kind of look into. Um, but the one I think we should try is called the 16-8 method. So this involves basically, I mean, you don't have to, but you basically skip breakfast and restrict your diet to eating only between a, a, an eight-hour window and okay. then you stop eating for 16 hours. Okay, gotcha. Which sounds like a long time, but that could be whilst you're asleep. Yeah. So you can only eat throughout your work day, for example. You you know, you work mainly eight hours. But if you eat at eight o'clock, you can only, the latest you can eat is whatever, five. So you would need to be having your dinner between that time. Mm, So it takes quite a lot of willpower to decide like whether you're going to have a big breakfast to break your fast or you're going to have an early dinner. Um, And it's something you probably have to agree with Kaylee in terms of what you want to do because you could keep, like the way you'd do it if you wanted to eat together would be, that you break your fast later. So you would maybe yeah. eat your breakfast at 12 o'clock or you'd eat your lunch at 12 o'clock and then you've got till eight o'clock. I mean, I don't eat breakfast at all. So for me, this uh, may be a bit of a slam dunk. I think I talked about this on episode seven where we talked about uh, dealing with distractions and uh, one of your distractions was being hungry. Uh, and I actually, 
uh, to remind the listener or to suggest that they go back and listen to episode seven because it's a fantastic episode about how we talk about dealing with distractions. And I actually wrote an article on our website about my experience with it as well. So um, yeah, check that out too. I find that being hungry sharpens my focus a little bit. It makes me feel like I'm kind of at 105% of focus. Do you see what I mean? It's like it's like a little speed buff and a bit of a focus buff when I'm like mm, a feeling a little bit hungry. Not hangry. When it goes beyond that, it's it then becomes to a detriment, right? So I skip breakfast. I tend not to eat in the morning. I do have a little snacky snack at 11 a.m. typically. A little, little biscuit maybe. Not anymore, and that's sir. that's probably bad. Or a banana. I've taken to eating bananas recently so but not anymore so i'm going to i'm going to you know just to keep things consistent and keep this scientific i'm going to go 16 8 so i'm going to say between one and i mean i could probably do 12 and eight because who eats at nine o'clock at night unless you're crazy there's just one thing i wanted to say on this there's okay. probably a good way to maintain this in that you don't have to keep a track yourself as well there's an app called zero okay that essentially you put a timer on when you um, decide that you're fasting or I can't remember which order it is I need to look it up again it's right. quite a simple app but you oh. basically say I'm doing 16 8 um, so you either set the timer for like 8 hours or you set it for 16 hours overnight so then yeah. when you get up in the morning you're not like doing the maths you just it will be counting down it's like you've got 3 hours left until you can eat right. which is actually horrible right Okay. <laughs> because I know you say you don't normally eat until maybe 11 mm. but when you're looking at a clock and it's like you have you have to wait another 3 hours before you eat your stomach just goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> Starts yeah, growling at you, getting angry. I want food. <laughs> <laughs> Please feed me. I don't know why my stomach is some sort of uh, like New York mobster. Ah, Shay. <laughs> Clancy Wiggum. Um, okay, noted. There's a few apps we need to install after this yeah, to get ourselves fine. prepped, but yeah. That's fine. Well, shall we do the PPPs, the p p p Yes, p Yes, p p please. So... <laughs> that was good. I enjoyed that. But yes, Papa, please. Um, so purpose, I guess. What weight loss? I don't really want to measure weight loss. It's not. It's not one of my kind of objectives or core principles. But increased focus is something. Is the bit that I'm, I guess, most interested in from this. Would you say that that's what people are touting? Yeah, it seems to be a very weight loss um, centric task. But even just in doing so, not in, not necessarily just losing weight, but it's really good for like losing belly fat as well. Oh, cool. And one of my mates swears by it that if he wants, maybe this is extreme, but if he wants a six pack, he'll fast for a couple of months or a couple of weeks even. And it just, it, the weight falls off you because your body has an actual time to process it. Yeah. And it just okay. starts processing things normally. There is there is actually a ton of benefits, but I'm conscious we've kind of um, gone over quite a lot through this episode. So there is a lot of research that you can do and I'd advise the listener to have a, you know, have a quick read I, I well let's go let's do a deep a deeper dive when we actually do the episode exactly yeah. that'd be interesting um but i think in terms of when we look at it from a productivity point of view just to keep things on task yeah the increased focus is is something that i read as being one of the benefits um so that that will be interesting to see how that how that pans out so what's your prediction how do you think this is going to go for you dan so i have a confession i've actively done in intermittent fasting before and uh, to be perfectly honest, I loved it. I did feel more focused, so uh, I can kind of predict where it's going to go, hopefully. But the okay. only reason I stopped, you know, it's, it's all well and good me saying I've done it and it was great. But the question is, why are you, you know, why aren't you doing it now? Yeah. Um, and this was because the, at the time I was doing it, I was working in London, I was going into an office, and sometimes you don't have full control over when you can eat. You don't have full yeah. control over your diet. You know, sometimes you get stuck on calls, you get stuck in meetings you know, your shifts change, all this sort of stuff, your train's delayed. So by the time you get back, do you then take the decision to be like, well, I've missed my fasting window yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that, you know? Um, so like if I have my first meal at whatever, 12 o'clock, I, you know, and I can eat at eight o'clock in the evening, if I'm not home by that time or I haven't gone past a shop to get any food, um, it was really difficult. So I kind of gave that up. And now having, you know, being not, I say stuck working at home and stuff, I have greater control over what I can do and when I can eat and what I can eat. And I tend to, I tend to find that when I was doing the intermittent fasting before, because you're so hungry, you actually choose what you want to eat sparingly. You don't like think, Oh, I've, I've, you know, I'm about to break my fast. Let me go and get a, you know, 
Papa John's pizza or something like that and 15 tubs of garlic butter, you actually think I'm really hungry and I could just do with anything. So you go for stuff that's tasty, you go for fruit as well. And when you're snacking, you don't feel like I just want to load up on chocolate because you actually do get like a renewed sense of health from it. It's kind of weird. And I I kind of hope that you experience the same thing that I did. But um, I, yeah, I predict that it's going to be quite a good experience. And also at the time I was drinking. So a drink would count as breaking your fast as well. Does coffee? Uh, You can drink black coffee and water. Okay, fine. Yeah, so between like... (sighs) if. Yeah, I, 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 I had a, uh, <laughs> would have woof. killed you. I, that would have been tough. I mean, I think I spoke about it maybe on episode, I think it was episode seven or maybe episode six where I experimented with coffee and I experimented with uh, moving my morning coffee from as, as soon as I got up to slightly later. And my good golly gosh, did it hit me for six so i'm very grateful that okay i just need to not have milk with my coffee which is okay that's a bit that's a bit upsetting that I've... seems to have um resonated with quite a few of our listeners i had um actually a bigger influx of messages about that saying that they were trying the whole coffee thing really and having i think it was me that mentioned that we that i get up and i have like a big glass of water to kind of kick start yep. my day as opposed yep. to getting up and having coffee and stuff like that and i feel like that resonated with a lot of people and they've started trying it which Brilliant. is cool yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, I mean I still I I've you know to to update the listeners on where I'm at. I uh, I did it for a week and then went, you know what? I just I like the ritual of having a coffee when I wake up. What I've um not stopped doing is really hydrating as well. Um as well as the coffee, so I don't just have the coffee. I have coffee and a liter of water at the same time. And uh it helps me get going in the morning. If that makes sense, I'm going to yeah, yeah. just say that and leave it there. And you can interpret from getting going in the morning, uh, <laughs> however you may like, with so I, uh, the emphasis on going. So, there so we go. you know, talking about um, automation last week, sorry to kind of jump back to that. No, it's fine. I uh, try to inbuilt, inbuild a load of stuff into my physical machine that I do my work on and I built an right. app that literally at quarter past 10 will ask me if I've had my coffee and it, based on a yes or no input it will say like go get a coffee as a reminder not like you know I didn't want to have a calendar appointment that comes up that right. just pops up in front of everything and says have you had a coffee yet because sometimes I get to lit- I found this week I've been particularly busy so when it comes to like half 10 I'm like I have not had a coffee and it just comes up now at quarter past 10 and because I, f- I tend to get into that slump where I'm like, why do I feel so, you know, so pants? Right. And it's like, well, you haven't yeah. drunk any caffeine. You haven't drunk any water. I have a water check as well. But it's really cool because it just comes up and it says, you know, automate. You know, have you had your coffee yet, sir? Yeah. And then I go, nope. Uh, it's literally a, a tick box. So I go, like a yeah, yes yeah. or no option. But yeah, that's nice. quite cool. That's cool. I might try I mean, and build I'll... something like that for the intermittent fasting, like a, a nice little yeah. pop-up. Because the issue I had, and we can talk about this in more detail in another episode, is that I've got you know, automation that runs on my phone, then I've got it on my Mac and then I've got it on yeah. my work laptop. And then I've got personal automation that I run on my personal laptop and stuff. And it's like, right. I just wanted work-based stuff. Like even if I'm working, I don't want like to my phone to buzz and say, you should have a coffee. I wanted yeah. it to just kind of all be on my work laptop. So if I'm working away, it'll just pop up and I go, oh yeah, I've got to do this. Mm. So I want everything that's centered around like my work routine to be there. So contexts. I get that. Exactly. Yeah. It was it was actually inspired based on the whole context switching thing. And I want all of my nice. context for work built into work. And I want all of my context for, you know, personal stuff and audio stuff built into my other computers. So. Give you an inch to talk about automation and you take you take 10 miles, <laughs> mate. Yeah, this is about, we're talking about intermittent fasting. and You managed to segue that onto, what well, the thing I've done with automation. Uh, it, <laughs> I'm going to get a bot that brings my food to me when my fast is broken. You are going to be the cause of the singularity. I can I can just feel it. I can just feel it. You know, Dan Skynet. Coming back to, to the task at hand. Uh, my prediction for this task, I don't have one. I really am not sure how this is going to, how this is going to, this is going to help me. You've not got a simple one like you're going to be hungry? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could have gone on brand with the other three. Yeah. I'm going to be hungry in the morning. You know, because it's 20 to 11 at the moment and I can feel my tummy rumbling because it's like, 
I'm about to get a biscuit. And that's the thing, right? That is the interesting thing that I looked up and, and, and found in terms of research is that when you're hungry, you're not actually hungry. You've yeah. trained your body into expecting food at particular times in, in the day. So it has a response. But if you can have if you have the discipline to overcome those responses, then you realize, actually, I don't need food. You know, this is what Jacko said when I was researching Jocko rather this is what Jocko said when I was researching the waking up at 4 30 a.m because he does like proper fasts like 24 48 72 hour fasts and um whilst I'm not going to do that that's just not something that's a step too far probably five steps too far it was interesting how he was talking about discipline and control and like you know that is the the ultimate control mechanism right and that's it what he was saying was a little bit problematic and so I'm not going to go any further into it but it was an interesting point of view you know when we're thinking about you know discipline and and, and things like that so um I don't know how if it's going to actually improve my focus whether it's going to you know make me feel more focused or productive or whatever but I'm going to go into it with an open mind. I'm going to follow the process. I'm going to show up in, in a high quality way, like I always do with the things that I do. And then the the output will be the output. You know, the result will be the result. And speaking of the result, I would like to propose how we how we do this. And this is a little bit more loose, a little bit loosey-goosey. Um, so I'm looking for a little bit of maybe guidance from you. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to do it two weeks like we did the others. I'm going to use zero as well because that feels like, you know, let's keep it consistent in terms of the applications that we will be using to, to manage it. Yep. And we can we can record weight again. Yeah. I, again, for me, I'm, I don't need to lose any weight. I'm, you know, I'm thin enough as it is. Speak for yourself, yeah. It's your opinion. So, well, I, I know I am. I know my BMI. I know, you know, so I know, you know, it's all... It's all... I'm just saying, Joe, that's your opinion. Okay. It, yeah. Based on science. <laughs> And we're not ignoring science this week, so... No. I think, for me, I want to record record focus levels, stress levels, things like that, you know, because I do get hangry. And so I want to record when that when this is a ne- has a negative impact. So I'm interested to, to see that too. So that's my proposal to you, Dan. What do you think? Yep. On board with it. Fine. I think that'd be wicked. Um, I don't think we need to coincide our times in terms of when we eat versus not eating. I don't think no. we need to be that in sync. You know, our routines are vastly different, even though we, you know, have similar job requirements in terms of, mm-hmm. you know, times at the desk and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and similar routines. I feel like, you know, you know best your diet and when you want to eat. So you stick to yours and I'll stick to mine. I'm happy to Fine. keep a track of when it is. Um, but yeah, I'd just become familiar with zero first and we can work out how we want to track it. But yeah. I have an addendum to, to this proposal, um, if I could uh, if I could table it. So actually what you said there, I would disagree with a little bit. I actually Oof, think that... An um, argument. I know, oh, an argument. In oh, public. God. Our first <laughs> argument, 16 episodes and we're having our first argument. Oh my God. Um, so I actually think that recording nutrition would be interesting because if we are fasting are we because you know when you're really hungry what do you crave you want fat sugar salt right that's a fact pringles thai sweet chili crisps oh sorry you weren't asking me to guess right or sniders of hanover (laughs) jalapeno pretzel pieces you are bloody sponsored by them. I could tell you that. I wish I was. Every I day wish you I was. That to me. I wish I was. They are <laughs> delicious. They're the best thing since sliced bread. And there's an app that um, has been recommended on an episode of uh, Mac Power Users that I listened to recently called Food Numbs. And I think it's a good app for us to use because a lot of these nutrition trackers uh, are very, they're not evil but they track and capture a lot of data about you. And I'm always a little bit nervous about using things like that because uh, I don't want people to uh, to spy on me and what I eat. Uh, Food Numbs is not a creepy version of those, of those sorts of apps. Um, so we should probably use that, track what we eat, track our nutrition to see if, okay, you know, whilst we did fasting, did we eat worse, measurably worse than we did pre-fast? So we should do that from today. Start tracking what we eat so that we get, build a base of data. Um, you know, build build up a uh, uh, you know a control uh, sample of our food nutrition, and then we go. Okay, well, let's see how we differed when we went to intermittent fasting and compare the results. What do you think? Yeah, 
Science. That would be, be awesome. Um, I, I'm interested to see what Food Numb does differently, and I'm interested to see what results we get. Uh, interested yeah. to see how it tracks it, and you know, I'm always up for a good app. Fantastic. Okay, so we have set up the next four episodes for us. Uh, so you know, we're going to be doing because we we're a weekly show. We're, we're going to be doing episodes interspersed in between these. So you know, just your regular programming, dear listener. Um, but we thought this was going to be really interesting to kind of try these things out, see how we get on, and uh, and you know, contribute to probably all of the other productivity hackers that have been doing this sort of thing as well. So, what one thing I would ask uh, before we conclude today's show is. If you want to get on board with us, then yeah, feel free to try it out too. Obviously, you know, go and do all of the relevant normal research that you would do based on your sort of health situation, etc. Um, but it should be quite interesting, you know, and please share your experiences if you've done this before and you've got any good things, bad things that uh, that we need to avoid. Um, share it with us on Twitter uh, at Thrive Guys Pod or share it with us on Instagram at Thrive Guys Pod as well. And um, and actually, just before we wrap up, we we launched our website recently, didn't we, Dan? Correct. You know, th- that was a, a long time coming, um, but it's up and running. And you know, credit to you, Dan, for getting it all sorted. That was uh, it. Took us a while, and it's it, but it's here. It's live. What's the website address, Dan? Thriveguys.io. Thriveguys.io. We are one of those companies that has a .io. It's because our website was built on Notion to to remain on brand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, we've got additional content on there. We've got uh, Thrive Rights, which is uh, you know short articles based on some of the stuff we talk about in uh, in the in the episodes. We've got links to everywhere uh, that you can listen to our podcast. So if you found us on Apple Podcasts, but you want to listen to us on Spotify, you can go there and find all the links and all of that good stuff. So um, feel free to check it out. We're going to be uploading loads of new content on there as as time goes on as we expand our uh, our media empire. Um, <laughs> if we ever get round to it. Um, so yeah have you got anything to wrap us up with Dan or are we good to to finish today we're all good well let's see how we get on so first up is uh, cold showers so uh, enjoy your shower tomorrow Dan starting tomorrow yeah heckin Nora thanks everybody for listening if you enjoyed this episode please consider subscribing to our show and if you really really liked it please consider giving us a five star rating yeah, that really helps us out, helps us grow our audience. So, you know, only if you loved it, but if you did, then that'd be really good. If you'd like to hear more from Dan or myself, please follow us on Twitter at ThriveGuysPod. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Say goodbye, Dan. Goodbye.